Hey, this is Leah from Mandala Studios. Welcome to the workshop. This is part one of our making more faux mantlers video. So this is a different way of doing it and this starting with our fabrication. First of all, I'm making a pattern. We have measurements we're working to, so I'm drawing those on the piece of paper. This is because if you see really faintly in the right hand side of that paper, I drew a pair and when I looked at them, they were completely the wrong size. I'm drawing several different types of antler on the piece of paper. I'm just going over and over until I get a design I'm happy with. And I I think I'm struggling to stay because some of these are awful. Um, they're not bad, they're just really not like antlers look. They have uses, but they're not what we were after in this particular case. So that one, um, it's far too fussy. Tines are pointing in the wrong direction. You do get one tine quite often that does point down on antlers, but most of the rest of them on natural antlers, especially the type that we usually work with, will point up. I'd work that out by the time I'm drawing this one that I'm currently drawing now. However, I still made mistakes here. When I looked at it, it was again too fussy, it had too many tines. So, another attempt. And I think I decided fairly quickly that actually I was much happier with this. It's not perfect, and I'll go back in a second and add a bit more, I think. And this is me labelling my mistakes and telling, saying why I think they were wrong. There we go. Happy with the size, happy with that particular one. So we're going to cut out our template. We can use the same template for both of the antlers in a pair, and we're going to cut out four pieces altogether. So one template, which we will use, we'll use that twice, and then we'll use those two to create the next two cuts. At this point we move to cutting out the foam sheets. We're using two different types of foam. We're doing one layer of LD45 and one layer of LD70. The LD70 is stiffer, it means our antlers don't waggle as much. With, the, with this layer I'm cutting accurately to the shape of the template. With the next layer I'm going to give myself some more space to manoeuvre and you'll see that in a minute when I, when, when I cut those out. This is because we're going to laminate the two layers, layers together and we're going to do that, but we're going to put the curves of the antler in as we do that. Um, so this one one pair that fits really nicely, and one pair that has a lot of extra foam so that where things are slightly different lengths, it doesn't matter as much, is the way best way we found of doing that. Just getting all those little details out there. I think you can see I've actually switched that tine that pointed downwards up to point up. So I have changed slightly from my template. I've worked out that, yeah, again, that tine needs to go up, not down. It's really important at this point that I make sure that I am working on both antlers uh, mirrored. Not, I don't have those two bits the same 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 way up. So where I'm cutting this one out, and I'll put the antler back in a minute, you can see I'm cutting away from the actual edges of the first antler. This is what I'm talking about when I say I'm giving myself space, space to bend the tines in different directions. It means you can see we've had to go all the way into the corners of the tines so that we can bend. For example, one might go forwards a bit, the other one might curve and go back a bit. Um, but yeah, we don't have two exact antler shapes because that would it would end up having to cut too much off, we'd lose our nice shapes there. We're laminating the two pieces of foam together, so I'm applying a thin layer of um, contact adhesive all the way over each of the two sides we're sticking together. It needs to be a nice smooth layer, no puddles, nice and thin. And in fact on this one, I go walk away to let it dry, and then I'm going to put another second coat on on this one. There's a couple of reasons we could have done that. In my case, the most common one is I've walked away and then forgotten about it and not come back in time. Because you need to wait until it's touch dry. If you leave it for too long beyond that, it won't work. So here's me putting my second coat of glue on. Once we've finished with the gluing, we're going to bring out a head, a little head on wheels. And the two of us will work together to laminate it so we can get a nice symmetrical set of antlers. And while antlers aren't normally that symmetrical in nature, when we're making them, we tend to want a symmetrical pair, so we tend to try and make them match as much as possible. They're never going to be perfect, but that's fine. As I say, they don't match in nature. It's, as long as we try, they're usually close enough. 
You can see me bending the layers of foam there to try and get the shapes that we want. And with the second one, I am trying to bend it to match the first to get the same curves in, to get the same twists. And as we laminate it together, the foam will hold those twists and curves together. At this point, we're going to trim off all the excess foam. So where we had that sheet, sheet that was slightly oversized, we're taking off all the foam we don't need there. We're cutting everything back nicely so the antlers are our nice antler shape. We'll also take off some of the corners here. Obviously, if we cut it off flat, we end up with a really square pair of antlers. We want nice rounded shapes. We want nice smooth transitions between various bits and pieces. Um, the different type of deer have different shaped antlers, different sized antlers. Um, things that will change between them are things like the way that, how much the antlers are webbed, uh, how many tines they've got, and the position and the direction. Most antlers will have, you know, as they come off from the head, there will be a small tine pointing forwards, and then the rest will be in a slightly different plane. And you can see we've included that on here. There is a small tine down at the bottom of the antler. And we're rounding off the shapes we've got nicely. We're leaving the bottom a little bit square and we'll show you why we're doing that in a minute. But for the most part, we're just starting to get the shapes in place. We're starting to trim things closer to their final look. We keep comparing the two antlers. This is really important because if you are trying to get a symmetrical pair, you need to hold them next to each other, see where they you know, that they've got the same angles, that they touch touch each other in the right places, that everything looks nice and symmetrical. So I said we left the base a little, a little flat there, and that's because we are limited by the thickness of the foam we've used. So here we're using some pipe lagging, and we're going to add some base to that, uh, some bulk to that base, so we've got a nice rounded base to our antler. I think we use about 12, two sheets of 12 mil foam, which means our base is only about an inch thick, about 24 mil thick. Um, adding the pipe lagging rounds that out nicely and once we've got the pipe lagging on we'll trim off the excess and make everything fit nicely. We're not going to stop there, I mean this is this is more trimming, this is again going through making everything curve nicely, trimming it so it's rounded where the pipe lagging is um, and just making sure we're happy with the shape. You're going to keep having to do that. We're using craft knives. You've got to keep them sharp when you're working with the foam. You shouldn't need to saw. You should just be able to cut through smoothly. Um, if you're having to saw backwards and forwards and put a lot of pressure on, then your knife isn't sharp enough and you're going to leave marks in the foam. You're going to tear the foam. You need to be working with a decent sharp knife for this. Once we're mostly happy with the shapes we've got, and we are still whittling down there, we're going to go over that. Compare again. <laughs> Decide we're happy. Show you them on the head. And then we're going to go over that with a Dremel and sand that down to get really nice curves on there. So we've got none of the edges where we've cut through knives, none of the cutting lines. Everything is nicely rounded, looks really smooth and we've got a good base to build the detail up on. And it's not going to look like we've hacked it up. At this point we're going over them with a heat gun. That closes the structure of the foam up, which means that when we're putting more glue on, especially when we've been sanding it, it means that when we're putting more glue on or when we're painting it, it'll take the paint a lot better. It also removes the fuzzy look. So before we added the bit at the base with some pipe lagging, what we're using here is much thinner. It's not a tube, it's solid, it's called, uh, it's backer rod. And we're cutting some bits of that just to add more texture and striation up the shape of the antler. They're really small and light. We're going to have to contact adhesive them on. Adhesive them on. If we sprayed them with contact adhesive, they'd either go everywhere or we'd coat our hands in glue. Um, and that makes it a lot harder to work if your hands are sticking to everything. So that's why we've pinned them down to a piece of cardboard. And we've got some thicker backer rod here, again cutting that in half, sticking a couple of bits of that down, here we go, and adding some glue to that. And once those are dry there'll be glue also on the antlers, so once that's all dry we'll start sticking that onto the antler itself. There we go. 
They're running in the direction of the antler up the main body, and you can see we're using that thicker piece of backer rod at the bottom to make a ring around the base of the antler. There we go, that's the size and shape we've got to. So we're using a soldering iron to texture that. We're adding more texture to the ring around the base because obviously it was looking a bit cartoony. And we're going to be adding yet more, another layer of striations up the antler, another layer of texture into that. Just building, burning the little lines in. It's all got to flow in the direction that the antler flows. Apart from the dots. So thank you for watching. That's part one of making antlers. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share.